was a story. A more woe than this. A Juliet and a Romeo. Obviously Romeo is one of the most iconic roles you could play. Mm -hmm. Did you have any reservations about playing him? Yeah, I mean, at first you're slightly daunted by the idea because uh, Romeo and Juliet comes with so much baggage. I don't know why, but people sort of, you know, people seem to sort of, it comes with it. So I was prepared for that and um, you quickly have to throw all that out the window at the beginning. And me and Hayley wanted to do that and just sort of come as two young people, really similar age to the, the, the actual characters in the play, 13 and 17, and we were 15 and 19. And it's the closest it's been, actually. So for us, we just wanted to come as two normal young, innocent teenagers and put them in one of the most amazing love stories and just see what we could create in Verona, in Manta, in Roma, in these amazing places. Oh, Juliet, if your heart like mine is full, then tell the joy that waits us this night. I cannot tell of what is limitless. You're probably tired of, of all the Neal DiCaprio mm -hmm. comparisons, but what did you want to bring to the role that was different to, to all of those previous actors? Yeah, I mean, for me, as soon as I knew I was doing it, I didn't revisit the um, those films intentionally because I didn't want it to sort of that to inform what I did. So for what I wanted to bring was just bringing this young, innocent guy opposite a very young, genuinely young, innocent girl and sort of just seeing where it took us. You know, and I, f I feel like in our film we were lucky, you know, I was so lucky to have Damien Lewis, to have Paul Giamatti, Leslie Manville, these surrounding characters, where sometimes these surrounding characters are played like slightly like a caricature, like a bumbling friar, a bumbling nurse, and here they created these incredible, touching sort of relationships that you sometimes hadn't seen before and I, and I really wanted you to care about these people and their relationships together you know apart not just Romeo and Juliet in the center of the story speak yourself I should be a capulet what have I done who murdered my tomorrow at once exciting hands <sighs> safety net to hold me now there is no world beyond the city's walls just purgatory Heaven is here, where Juliet lives. Every unworthy thing may look on her, but Romeo may not. There are lots of really nice additions to the script, obviously, by Julian. Um, one of the things I liked the most was that you were an artist or a sculptor. Did you think that that kind of informed your character as well? Yeah, of course. From the outset, I mean, I, I you know, the Zeffirelli version, you know, the first time you see him, he's sort of, uh, he's twiddling a flower, you know, and it's like, that's all good and well, but... Who is this? I don't know. I don't know a teenager that walks along twiddling a flower. Um, so it was great. We wanted to give him something to do. You know, he like he loved sculpture. He he loved to ride. He you know he loved to train. You know, all these things. I wanted to make him tr try and feel as just real and normal, not in a boring way, but normal as like someone that, that a teenager could really relate to. fall in love it's that feeling of what is happening to me <laughs> you know which way is up which way is down like all these chemicals that are starting to flow around your body for the first time these these feelings that you've never felt before and um, as young actors that's what we really want to br bring across in, in this version give me my Romeo and when he shall die cut him out in little stars he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night 